Hello all you Astro Flower people out there. This is going to be another energy masterclass, but this is on um, the karmic block or the karma basically of life. And it's going to be in three parts. So this first part is going to be the basic information which concern you as an individual. The second part is going to be us as a collective. And the third part is going to be about energy and how we can use it through the healing process, which I've been doing over the last 25 years. So, karma. First things first, let me just show you where I am. Beautiful mountains and sides in front of me. And some lovely little stream just by me. So, karma, translated is supposed to be action and it's not a case of retribution it's not a case of one-upmanship it's about learning we come to this plane as far as I can tell to understand something about the human being about the human existence The karma or the action that we put upon the world, it's returned to us in the same sort of vein in which we put out. I can hear many of you sort of saying that's quite, that's not quite the world that we're living in at the moment. And yeah, I can understand that. But these times are very particular. Karma, like energy, doesn't have a good and bad agenda. It doesn't look at things in that way. Karma, as I said, is about the learning process. We are all here to learn something. <clears throat> and we learn constantly throughout our life. In the actions that we do and what they yield. The learning process is on an individual basis. But with that individual basis, there also comes the collective. If you can imagine it like such, throughout this life, you fill in your book. You fill it up with lots of memories and experiences upon this plane. And when this life is over, when you have to give your body back to the owner, the earth, of the body, you take those memories with you. You do not take the cellular memory that is in your body. The cellular memory that is in your body is for the earth. And those memories that you filled up in your book you put into a library, which people call the Akashic Library. I like to call it the Collective Library. And in that library, there is lots of experiences. So we can get a full picture of the human spirit, or of learning the situations or realities that is found upon this plane. And this is where the good and bad comes into it. <clears throat> Let's say I'm on a mission to understand persecution. In order to understand persecution, I must have led a life of someone who is persecuted. 
But at the same time, I must have led another life as a persecutor in order to understand persecution. So now you have before you a spirit that has been persecuted and a spirit that has also been a persecutor. Tell me if that person is good or bad. I think it's impossible to say. But what we could learn, and this is where we connect as individuals to our karma on a collective scale, is persecution. Not everybody has been persecuted and not everybody has been a persecutor. Not every single individual has to go through that learning process because others have done it for you. It's like to understand money. Surely you must have lived a life of being very rich. And then you must have lived a life when you were very poor. We are here to understand every angle of the karma. That bibliotheque that I was talking about, that library, that collective library, If you imagine it, it's like the internet. It has all the answers. And you and I are no more than a memory stick. I can't hold the entire internet on my memory stick. I can only hold what I have learnt or what is important to me on the internet that I need to know. Over the past 25 years, there has been major changes in the karma. This happens with a newborn. The old karmic block was quite literally that, a block, a square block that we carved gradually throughout our experiences, showing each side of the situation, each facet of the situation. That's why good and bad cannot be applied. If you like, it's like a totem pole or tattoos. You're marking your experience or your interaction with this beautiful place we call planet Earth and everything that comes with it. If I was to put out something bad or considering to be bad within the human race I would be paid back through the karma in bad it's like a boomerang so as an individual I put out certain things in life which helps me to learn my karma if I put out anger that boomerang is anger I throw it out into the world. It connects with other people. It affects other people's karmic paths as well. And as it collects the information, the action of doing the circling effect of the situation, it comes back to me. And I take that boomerang. And I take all of its learning as it goes round. And I may take that back, that boomerang, in the sense of others being angry towards me. The most important thing to do with karma 
is to be you. Regardless of whether you think it's good or bad, or rather the outside world perceives it to be good and bad, you should know by now we have come to a stage within this vibration that that square karmic block has reached its limits. I have been saying to people for now 20 years that the karmic block is finished. The karmic path, in a way, is finished on an individual basis. It's like we've passed our exams and have left college or high school. And now we must apply what we have learnt in the world. And this is the new karmic path. The generations that have been born, I would say from around about 1990 onwards, have a different type of karma. And we will be going into that in part three. There is a definite difference in generations now. The people with the old karma, such as my good self, has been replaced by a light. That we are volunteers here to help the transition from one paradigm or one dimension to another. That is your karmic path. Your karmic path is to put into action, karma, all the things we have learned through our previous actions, karma, in order to make this transition between one dimension and another. How do we recognize that dimension? Well, it's not exactly signposts like you would get on a freeway or a motorway. It's more of a case to do with your feelings and your sense of who you are. And this is where we come back to the most important thing. Living your truth. Living who you should be. In accordance to all of the experience you've had in all the lives you've had. Putting it into action. Understanding that path comes through many things, and in particular, the senses. So the seven wonders of the world. Colour, temperature, odour, taste, shape, sound, and texture. How it interacts with us and our energy makes us feel that we are on the right path or not. If you feel you're not on the right path, it is now time to change. It is now time to act, as in action, how you should be. Act your true self. We are on the cusp of a mo monumentous change. Not just us as humans, but also this planet, the energy itself, the vibration, is all changing. Endless change is pointless without direction. Take your direction in life and be true to who you are. Your karma will thank you for it. We have part two coming up.
and part three in the next few days here on the Astro Flower. We do readings here through tarot cards, but I also do readings of the aura and of the chakras of each sign. And you are more than welcome on this channel. Your presence will, would be lovely. But until the next time, don't forget, life should be fun. Please do enjoy.